I had the good uh, fortune with QUNE to go and watch a UFC fight at your crib. And I was like, this dude got gems. So we're about to get into that. Before we do, I want to ask you, how are you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. I'm chilling, man. Thanks for being mm -hmm. everything. Really? The fam's good. Everybody's good. That's already, beautiful. I see that you're chilling and I, you know, it's weird, dude. In this era, we don't talk to each other on a day to day, but I know exactly what you're doing. And I feel like I stalk you without <laughs> really talking to you. <laughs> Well, it's, you know what, Bill? It, it, it's all just good energy, right? Because we homies from a different cut, a different time. And definitely, we survived a moment. So. My man. I could tell stories about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we got Q Unique for. <laughs> what? That's what we got Q Unique for. He remembers all that shit, too. Yo, Yo. so. You put me on the spot. Bro, you didn't well, you're not on the spot yet. First and foremost, this is about, you know, us just like recapping and knowing that uh, you have been active throughout all these years with uh, not only nonfiction, you did your own thing, La Coca, uh, Heavy Metal Kings. And now we have this new project that is coming out in about a month's time on the 22nd. Talk to us about that. You talking about the Gorilla Twins Correct. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, nah, it's been a long time in the in the in the making. We've been working on it for a couple years now, like two three years, not continually, but we've been you know jumping in, jumping out here in the heck of a busy dude. That's and beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It came out really well in that sense. Because if we would have just got in the studio like immediately when we started and hanged out the, you know paused the entire record in a uh -huh. too, uh, quick a fashion i don't think it would have been as organic you know what i mean like and i was like damn we're taking so long it took us a while to get it together but it's also because me and him we have one thing that's gonna make this album real banging especially beat wise is i i finally found someone who's as picky with beats as i am <laughs> that makes it difficult to get joint done because me and him are very, very serious about, you know, about the beats. And if I ain't feeling it, I ain't fucking with it. And vice versa. If he ain't feeling it, we didn't fuck with it. So that's part of why, as long as it did when we first started. But I think just the beat selection alone is bananas. And then you already know what we do lyrically. If you follow what we do, we're not... We're not for the faint of heart. So, so. Right. And that's why, you know, Nems who just got here, you know, he came late for the party. That guy, he definitely has a hunger, which which I admire as well. So you guys together uh, doing the Gorilla Twins. It almost felt like when he told me, it almost felt like information that happened 10 years ago in my brain because it just seemed so much of a natural uh, a combination of you two guys. Ability wise and all that. Now, Bill, before we continue, we need to start seeing an item. Now, the item you're going to show us, you can go light, you can go heavy, whichever way you want to go is great. But tell us something about your piece and what inspires you about the piece and why do you have it? All right, Bong, you, you're looking at one right now. This one is the, um, this is the fucking, the crown you up, so to speak. I figured we might as well jump off with this. That's a beautiful one to start on. So this right here, this, this is the um, Future Is Now album from the original painting. Wow. And, you know, um, hold on, hold on. So he's showing us the Future Is Now album cover, but the actual painting itself that sits on his wall. Yeah, you can flip the camera if you'd like. Uh -huh. There you go. That's what we want to see. And now, boss, right now you're looking at Jay Z. Hey, hey, you know if you if you know your shit, you know Jay Z is not on the album cover. Now I'm gonna Amazing. tell you the backstory on this. See, this is the complete painting. This is the this is the finished painting. The version of this painting that made it as the cover of the Future Is Now um, was incomplete complete version 
Wow. Now, what happened was, shout out to to Mir One from LA, graffiti legend. He did this album cover. And um, let me step back a little bit. Take it all in. Yeah, I appreciate that. You have the perspective. You see the couch. You know what I mean? So you see how big it is. That's a big thing. But, um, yeah, so this is the whole painting. Right here. I got to get it free. But, um, man, that's really nice. Yo, this dude just has you and Necro makeup. Don't worry about, don't worry about any of that energy. I'm Bill. Just, I'm just telling you, you're my man. So I'm just telling you. You see, you stop no, I don't. I I don't pay attention to anything negative, anything funny style. It's all about good, good genes in here, man. Yo, sh shout out to Necro. He produced joints on this album. Yes. All right, so yo, um, what's ill about this painting? If if y'all want, I give you a backstory. Go. Um, this painting right here was done by Mir One. Who, um, who, if you, you know graffiti, you might have you might have heard of him from just being a graffiti writer. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Go for it. Done mad album covers. He did like he did I think an album cover for Limp Bizkit. Wow. Yeah. He did an album cover for Visionary. Shout out to the Visionary. Mm -hmm. He did a bunch, a bunch of shit. Oh, by the way, I got the Terror Squad New Era Yankee. Uh <laughs> He casually just hit us with the Terror Squad Yankee cap. Huh? Come on, B. Shout out to the Bronx Social. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, casually. Keep going. But uh, when I when I hit up Mir, I was like, yo, remember remember from Good Times? Remember the JJ painting? Not that JJ. I don't know if JJ really did it. But, you know, in the in the beginning, they showed that painting. Yes, yes, yes. And then they, they redid it. For, uh, uh, Camp Low redid it. Right. I was like, yo, man, do that painting, but if World War Three was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do that. So, uh, so, a year later, the album was ready. We were ready to turn the album. We gave him a year. Wow. He was like, nah, it's not done. Holler back. Hallelujah, holler back. It ain't done. Right. Right. I'm like, nah, it's, it's done, bro. Like, <laughs> like, it's done. Like, it's been a year. Like, please, let me see what you did at least. Like, yes. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? It has to be, you had to accomplish something in a year. And he sent me what made it on the album. And we kind of had a back and forth. And we didn't really leave off that great at the time. Uh huh. Led to me not securing the painting, but it was not. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I'll give it to you for the cover, but this shit ain't done. I'm like, when is it going to be done, bro? He's like, well, now that you're making me turn in an incomplete version, I don't know. Which yeah. <laughs> like, uh, this is the square bit. Man, my man. Shout out to Hoban as well, the homie Hoban from BPLA. He's the one that actually got me and me to link up again years later. Amazing. And That's got dope. But um, but yeah, man. So I got the painting, bro. And you want to know what's crazy? Peace game. Peace this. Remember when Nam uh had our reunion after years of never of, of not doing that? We did that show. Uh huh. Cypress and and Immortal Technique and Benny. At, where was it? Was it at Okia Theater. Yes. Ever. That was the reunion show. Bang. That day. Hoven surprised me. This arrived at my house as I was walking out the door to go to the <laughs> Do that. A giant fucking crate. Double the size of the painting. Because you know how they To protect it. it. It's got to protect it. Yeah. Like, this shit looks like a fuck someone delivered a billboard to my house. <laughs> oh. What else? What else? What else we got in the, in the vote, Bill? Bro, this is the problem. You ain't got enough time. I should be the host of this show, not you. Go for it. Go. Go. Yo, bust it. I'm just going to throw some shit. You know what I mean? Go. I... Hey, listen. Hit him. I mean, yo, I mean, peep, peep game. Like, oh, uh, can I do a close-up? See, okay, hold on. Yes, you can. 1,000%. Can? I'm trying. See, like, 
You can see this. Well, go close to it. Go close to it. Uh, hold, on, hold on. I mean, I'm just going to... I got some, some, some stuff over here. But... Walk us through but... it, Bill. You 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 run the show. I'll sit back and, and, and just drop my... Wow. You got the bobo. You got the cause. So... <laughs> The futura, the actual painting. Okay. We got the canvas. But yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up. We're gonna bring this back. You want to fuck with stickers? I got stickers. Yo, check this out. We're gonna do a two-parter with the stickers, all right? Go so for it. If I come back in a month, uh huh. Still fucked up. <laughs> We're gonna do a in a month. And I'm gonna, all I could find was like one box of stickers. I got like 20 Jordan boxes full of stickers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My dude, this is just one, hold on. This is just one box. Woo! <laughs> First box. Yo, I'm mad. It's G-O-D. Father 5-3. Yo, so Loud, Loud had the best. Stickers. Shout yes, out to the three team. My Howie McDuffie, yeah. Duffy, the goon, the whole the whole loud. Everybody they had the best stickers. Loud was fire. You know what I mean? And, and um the thing about hold on, hold on. Let me put this over here. Yo, <laughs> yo, my man fell. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I know this ain't hip hop. No, it's all good. HR is hip hop. For sure. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. So, yo, we got a few of these, but this is my favorite. This this is my favorite Zar face. The uh, 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 Mexican bootleg version. There's only 10 of these in the world. Do you know? He but just hit you with there's only 10 of these. <laughs> Hold on, yo. There's only, uh, um, I don't know, maybe 100 of these. Shout oh my god. Juice. Shout out to my man Juice from from Flabber Zombies talking turps. This is just I just got this this week. This is brand new. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. Keep going. Fuck that. Fun. Woo! -hoo! New I, dog face. I, I'm, I'm waiting for my Ray Kwan and my Sean Price to to you know. We got we got the um, trap toys. Yes, the MF Duff with the belly. We got that. Hold on. Wow. All right, so stop right there, Bill. So this right here is inspired from the album that you have with uh, Stu Bangers. Cannibal Hulk. Yes. Awesome. So now, what's amazing is that they were. <laughs> that shit is fire. So, how many? It was the limited edition release, and they sold out almost immediately, yeah? Huh? There you go. Those, your, your Cannibal Hulk has sold out, the limited edition. Yeah, it sold out like. In a minute, like five minutes. Wow. <laughs> Bang. Hold on. So, so before we continue, how did you get inspired into, you know, coming up a, as a young head? Did you did you have toys that you kind of like lost it, it, through the through the years, or were you always someone who who like collected or traveled and bought stuff? Tell, walk us through that as a hip hop dude. I've always been a collector. That's the thing, and it's just, it's it's a it's cool, but I always been a collector, and and, and um, it's a problem. The last couple years, I've, I've moved to North Carolina for a while, and shit gets lost. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And is there what is the if you have it there, that's fine. But what is the oldest item or or what is your most prized possession i mean i could spend 
I'll just show you. Look, I could just show us. Show us. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Show and tell for hip hop. Let's go, Bill. I got something that I've been holding for mad years that um I always said, oh, I'm a frame this, you know, but it's kind of morbid. There's something morbid about it. Uh huh. Won't get rid of it, but <laughs> I don't really try to hang it in my house. You know what I mean? Like, okay. You dig what I'm saying? Of course. I'm gonna hold on a second. Once again, Ill Bill showing us some stash that he has. He wants to put it up. He's not so sure, but he's about to come and hit us in the head. He showed us the ghost face. He showed us some amazing pieces. This right. Ooh. Right here. Wow. This right here. He actually has. <laughs> Saved. Wow, Bill. He's got the actual article. Now, is this is this indicating a, a Big a passing or they that said there's he was a B- rubbed out earlier? Yesterday. See how this was- Yeah, he was rubbed yeah. out earlier yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Rubbed out. Because <laughs> they're looking at it as a mob hit. Out. Keep going, Bill. Keep going. You shouldn't. Yo, Pete. All right, this is a cassette. You see this cassette right here? Yes, I see it. P-Rock. Tell us. P-Rock gave me this. P Rock's handwriting. Wow. This cassette has the beat, beat for um if you got love on it. No fiction. Like he gave us two um two um what you call it? He gave us like two CDs, Cassettes two of beats, beats, like 20 beats. Uh-huh. But yo, D, after we dissed both beats and CDs, he's like, yeah, those, those were the B beats. He's like, you made it. <laughs> he made it with that cassette that had five beats on it. We picked two out of the five. Uh-huh. But the other one, like, nah, Jay-Z picked it. He was like, Jay-Z is holding it. That beat, Jay-Z ended up not using that other beat, but... Um, Big L used it. The song with Stan Spit and Homegirl singing on it. Ms. Yeah. Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That beat, that was the big hit. For of the Big L album that came out on Walker. Man, man, again, holding That's it down. Big L. Yep. We picked that joint. He told us not. Nah, That's, you know, he's like, if Jay don't want it, it's that you can have that. But, he's, but wow. he gave us that love. Amazing. Amazing. So you guys, you, you, you continue to do your thing. And the great thing is that nonfiction is able to travel and tour in the time when you guys start doing it in the in the mid to, to, to late 90s. Um, and then what, what made you feel confident enough to say, I want to branch out and do my own solo thing? Um... Not internally old. as far as like negative stuff, but more like just you and your confidence to say, I can do this. I was offered a, a, a $250,000 solo deal. Amazing. That's, that's good. He said that and he <laughs> chuckled. That gave me the confidence to go solo. That's beautiful. <laughs> See, I just want people to know this is show off your gems. You can show off your gems, an item, but a story like that is awesome. Nah, PK, PK, you, you know, both of us be like, oh, two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, sure. Check this out. That album, that's the future. That was supposed to be the um, hour of reprisal album. Was the one that. Okay. Now that's E Man Clause. So my man that signed me, shout out to Bobby Abrams. That's like a brother to me. 
my homie bounced. And when he bounced, I had to bounce with the album. I had a key man close because nobody almost ever gets that. Because nobody's really friends with the AM. That's my man. So, wow. Got it like that. So when I bounced, from, when he bounced from Warner Brothers, I bounced with that album. That album cover cost $10,000. I couldn't get it. Shout out, rest in peace, shout out to Larry Carroll. He did four album covers for Slayer and my album cover. He never did any other album covers for nobody else. And honestly, I could have never afforded him. I would have never paid 10000 for for an album cover if Warner Brothers wasn't paying for it. I was like, yo, if these motherfuckers are going to pay for that shit, <laughs> I had to end up recouping it. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, yeah. yo. <laughs> going to do my album cover, $10,000? Cut them check, bro. Yeah, that's amazing. What else we got, I Bill? Wish, I wish I had that one in the crib. For sure, I know you do. Maybe I could still get it though. <laughs> Everybody from his estate is watching. Let's go. To, let, let's see some some more treats you got, Bill. Salute to Sabak Red in here as well. Another nonfiction uh, general. Hi. Right, you know what? I'm a. I'm just, I'm just gonna. We're just gonna go to the last. I got stickers. I'm gonna, I hit you with some stickers. People asking for comics and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a huge Well, the action figures. Did you go through your action figures? Bro, I just bought... Oh, that's... Re I respect that. Go, go. Super villain, team up. Go. That's my new shit. Super villain, team up. I'm collecting these right now. There's another one. Bong. Super villain, team up. Yeah, man. Wow. You know. Black Panther... Four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Respect. Yo, shout out to whoever's idea was to make this. Rest in peace, my brother Sean Price. Wow. This is, we need hearts for the Sean Price. Let's I'm go. Waiting for, I'm waiting for the... This is fire. But I'm waiting for my Sean Price. One. That's beautiful. See those boxes over there, those boxes are um ill built. Actually, I mean, Cannibal Hulk ill. How many did they make of those? This is a variant. Man, salute to Trap There's Toys. Only, they got a lot of cool movies. stuff. That that the yo, like, I went on that site and they got some cool shit. 70? And when I seen that your your limited edition was sold out, I was pretty happy about that, brother. Yeah, shout out to Trap Toys. We gotta gotta do more. Hopefully, uh, hopefully awesome. You know, um, you want to see some stickers, bro? Oh, hit us with your gems if they gems to you, of course, bro. You know that Geo three part three was pretty. Motherfuckers gonna try to. Say I'm a Pokemon collector and shit. I'm gonna get played after doing this. You realize? No, that? you're not. No, you're oh, not <laughs> playing me in the comments, bro. Bro, yeah. why? Why are you letting any of this even exist? This nah. is two homies talking, and I just and I know you have a lot of cool shit. You no, want to talk about? Okay, let me do it for you. Here, I got, I got every Simpson uh, uh, product. And if you want to talk about, I got Smurfettes, I got, I got dolls, like it's all good, B. Get the fuck Farrell up. Munch. Promo sticker. <laughs> Who are these guys? Oh, the astronauts. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this shit right here. That's nice. Now, Bill, what gave you what, what gave you uh kind of what inspired you to come up in New York City to do what you did the way you did it uh, as far as an MC goes? Say what? What empowered you coming up in in New York City as an MC, understanding these the the challenges identity wise that you you might have faced. You know, I had to punch a lot of people in the face for trying to disrespect. That was a big, big 
I before I started um really going hard with the hip hop, I had a band. And um I'm gonna tell you, man, uh, having a band was really cool, it was fun, but it was there was nothing compared to how much fun I had making hip hop. There was just something about it that it captured me, man. Like and and um I think part of it might have been also that something really cool about hip hop that's very um self-contained. You don't need anybody, you don't need a drummer, you don't need Right, right, right. You don't even need a a, a, a radio. A, you can bang on a table and rhyme. You know what I mean? Yes. Like and that's really what attracts me to it, the simplicity of it. Because I, I was in a band from the age of like 14 to like 17, 18. And when I say I was in a band, I'm a different type. I'm kind of an alien. When I do shit, I do it in a different way. I'm yes. very, very serious about shit. So like, we were doing a lot of, we were a little bit ahead of our, ahead of our time when we were doing what we were doing. And I was so, I, I became so ahead of my time, I think in my mind that I realized that trying to keep a band together, three, four dudes, 18, 19, 20 years old, do what you need to do to, to succeed. I had it, but I was I couldn't find three, four dudes on, on the same head as me. Right, with the same energy. When I presented with the simplicity, and, and when I say simplicity, I don't mean that in a negative way, but to put hip hop down. That's the biggest compliment in the world. Uh-huh. So like Rick Rubin, who's the top producer in the world, fully strips everybody down. It's not like affect vocal. Simplicity is key to everything. If you can rock somebody, it's just you to stand in front of somebody, entertain them without any sound effects, without any extra curricular bullshit, without a feature, without a beat for somebody fly, without this. That's what attracted me to. And salute to Rick Rubin, but of course, a very influential person who sound made it possible for what it is we love to go beyond New York City. So definitely important. PC Boys fan, huge Rick Rubin fan more than, more than anything. I'm a Rick Rubin fan. I might, I might be the biggest fan in the world. I'm, I love Rick Rubin. You know what I mean? And, um, you know. So, Bill, you, you have you have some art on your wall as you show this, the, the Futuro, you show the, the, the mid joint. Now, were you ever into drawing or, or tagging or anything like that? Oh man, I was such. I was. I'm, I'll tell you what. I wanted to be such a graffiti writer so bad when I was like 13, 14, 15, and my best friend, Chunk, aka Gore-Tex, who was 12 years old at that. When I'm 13, he's 12. His hand skills were so naturally ill that Ill, graffiti writers that were all city that we would bump into, they would see his hand styles and they would be like, how the fuck, who are you? <laughs> he was so lazy as be, for being a writer to go out and bomb. He had no desire to, to, to get fame, which is <laughs> really care about. He didn't give a fuck, he give doors not, you know, if you know anything about Gore, if you're a big fan and you know the history of nonfiction, uh huh, is just like the most talented dude in the world. But he, he's not that driven. He's laid back. He's the most talented, laid back motherfucker you'll ever meet. Let's put did it that Ill way. Bill? Did Ill Bill have a MC name prior to being Ill Bill? I have mad prior names. MC Go MC. for it. What are they? Gordon, Echo, did I used to my. My first MC name, like, like, yo, this is my name, was Wordsworth, or Wordsworth, Wordsworth and Punchline, like, years before that, because of the white rhyming cat on Heathcliff. I, I respect him. it. I named myself after him. Horrible. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first, like, name, name, and that turned into big words, you know, and it's because, like, you know, most, it's, Ooh, double entendre. <laughs> so clever. I was, uh -huh. I was with this chick at the time, and she was like, yo, not for nothing. And she was like a Colombian chick from Washington, from, my bad, from Jackson Heights. 
Uh-huh. Either way, she had a big mouth. Shout out to Washington Heights and Jackson Heights girls. They all have big mouths. But anyway, she had a really big fucking mouth, this chick. Beautiful chick, but had a big mouth. And told me that basically my name was Hall. Big Words is the worst name in the world. And really <laughs> use that name. You'll get me. What you should call yourself is Ill Bill. That's a dope name. And you know what? She was like, wow. <laughs> But, That's um, amazing. Yeah, man. Fucking. What happened to them? Oh no, he's he's gonna come in in a bit. So, but I just want to make sure we got to see your gems. Got into your vault until next time, of course, because you want to show us some more in some time. Bro, I'm gonna tell yes. you, like, remember the Dutchman? Of course. You know, this is real. You know, bro, the stickers. It's like. Nah, but I, I respect definitely. I, I definitely res- I love. I love those. Uh, th- those pieces that you have, like the ghost face. You have the Futura. You have, you have the the cause joints. Those are really nice, bro. And I remember that's that's what I was like. Wow, man, this guy got. He's got a really nice setup, man. Really dope. Really inspiring. Yo, bro. I'm gonna tell you, I'm mad. I can't find my. Uh... Who the fuck is strapping these Gaddafi stickers and my who the fuck is poor Mega stickers? Bro, I, I fucking, I'm telling you, this is one box. I didn't even, you haven't even shown you nothing, bro. So For sure. You, bro, I got like 20 of those fucking long ass fucking Iron Man stickers, the Ghost Face ones. That yes. Ghost, remember them shit? Yes, for sure. <laughs> don't know, bro. Come on, man. Yo, I, I have it around here, but Bill. If you can, before you leave, I just want you to, uh, once again, I just want everybody to know, May 22nd is going to be the new release with NEMS. It's called Gorilla Twins. And make sure you guys go out there and support everything these two gentlemen do because I know it's coming from a, a beautiful place. But before before you leave, Bill, if you can say some, uh, some what, what keeps you positive, what keeps you, uh, uh, you know, going just overall and some inspiring words. For the people watching. Yo, I love this shit. This is this is the greatest fucking gift in the world to be able to fucking do what I do, bro. It's, I, this is what I do. Always, bro, always have. When I was fucking 10 years old, what I'm doing, I was doing exactly what I'm doing now, but like in a, on a different level, on a 10-year-old level. I'm the same motherfucker. I always, I always I knew I was going to do this. You know what I mean? Like it's, you believed, and you made it real. This is as real as it is. I just live it. It's what I live and breathe. It's what I do. I wake up. I'm happy to be alive. That's it. That's the most. Once you get past that, everything can go. Bill, I want to tell you, brother. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for continuing putting your music out. It is inspiring for many of us, and to see you still doing it from where we come from, I salute you, brother. Thank you. I just grabbed somebody, Lorenzo, uh, Life of Lozo is his account. My brother, how you doing? You good? Well, I'm good, man. How you doing? brother where, where you where you watching from I'm in Orlando Florida which is a beautiful place to be at now yeah. this is show off your gems yeah I want you to show yeah. off your gems first thing I got to show then is this Thurston Howell big big low the original 12 inch vinyl right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's I got very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, my man. I got, uh, I mean, 
I got a, a decent collection of hip hop gear and whatnot, but you know, I gotta have my my Jay Dilla, my De La Soul dunks in here. I admire uh, that. Turn the camera around so we can see that. Yeah, I got you. I think that I think that needs to be seen. The De La Soul uh, dunks, definitely yeah. the Jay Dilla Dow, which is yeah. a beautiful thing as well. Keep going. I got uh, my hip hop periodic table. Well, all the elements. I don't have the arsonists are not on here, but they should be. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, I got shout out to the Wu Tang. You know, my man. I got Big Daddy Kane original artwork. That Biggie Ready to Die vinyl. Uh, my my five my top five MCs. I don't know if you can see them all, but it's all original artwork right here. Okay. Red Man, yes. Biggie, Rakim, Nas, and M. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Detroit kid, so I got to get my Barry Sanders jersey up here. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm a DJ, so I got, I got, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm old school, so I got fat beats, my 1210s. You know what I mean? I, I keep it, I keep it all hip hop. <laughs> That's definitely beautiful. So you also have the, go, keep going. Yeah, yeah. I, of course, I got vinyl, but I got boxes of vinyl. I'm trying to find my damn uh, Arsonist 12 inch. That's that's a uh, Western Michigan Broncos baby. I went to school at Western Michigan, so my my cousin played ball there. So I got that up there. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, thank you. And then of course, like you know, I got my my signed George Clinton album. I saw him in the show last year, and uh, he he came on stage and signed that for me. So I was super stoked with all that stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to think. And then you have that. I, you have the Star Wars helmet, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So this this is actually this is crazy right here. So I, I do a I do a podcast called the Life of Lozo Podcast. We talk about '90s hip hop and stuff. But this is actually a piece of art for the year 1999. So these are the ten albums that dropped in '99 that this girl did for me. And it's all like so that's that's kind of my logo. But you got y'all seen Baymo's Death. You got Jizz's album. Check out the Rock of Sound Bomb. Uh -huh. All of this hand painted. Pharaoh, nice. Prince Paul, Meth and Red, 2001, The Roots, MF Doom. So, yeah, so I, I try to get as much uh, hip-hop artwork as I can get, man. That's, that's what I stay on. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, bro. That's Thank really you. beautiful. But I really want to tell everybody, if there is somebody out there, an artist that you guys would like to see on the show, I've had people tell me about Rob Bass's collection. If you can, just make sure you're telling them because I know them, but we need to kind of connect those dots because my head is everywhere as well trying to get other people on this show. But the most important part that I really enjoy is when I go into, uh, you know, we go into somebody's stash like this and look at, what, what are we looking at? What's that? The Red Man. It's the Red Man Adidas. Three stripes right there. Check that out. Yeah, the Red Man Adidas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> never never been disrespected or worn. They still got the uh still got the laces inside. Wow. Yep. <laughs> See, you was you just passing through it like it's whatever, bro. That's that's Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you, Rocket Man. I appreciate you coming on. Uh salute to Thurston Howell. To salute to Michigan and Orlando as well as yeah. you're at there. We appreciate human beings like you and everybody else rocking uh anything else you'd like to say my brother i was just looking for my lofo t-shirt because you know part of thurston's crew's out here in orlando so i had to represent and buy some shirts for them because they're always out here in the, in the orlando hip-hop scene so it was just it, what i love about thurston man is if you post his work you post his album you post his music he will repost it on all his social media feeds and just having access to artists like you and him and people that we grew up with I remember dropping that that arsonist joint on my mixtape back in like 2001. It's ending. It, I love you. Right. <laughs>